Okay. Let's try to add this uh, <coughs> edit function to the example we are doing. So what we said is when a person click one of these three buttons and we, we don't know which one will be clicked clearly, the information from the exams need to be, from the specific exam, needs to be passed or made available in some way to the form that will be closed and it will be need to be opened. And then the form needs to show the information from the exam. And we can do the first step of this path by adding, we say, a temporary state just for storing this information. We will see next week when we will add routing to this. So we, we will have multiple pages within a single page application that this could be handled in a separate way, in a different way. But for now, without routing, we need to rely on a dedicated state. And then when actually routing will use an internal state to do the same. So in the end, it will be a state not handled by us, but by somebody else, something else. But let's focus for now. So let's start from as a action, and then let's build the various steps that we need. When we press this button, the edit button, on click, what we need to do? Uh, yes, we can set the show form to true. That's right. Uh, set uh, show. That's not here, right? We need to pass it to a props. And this will open the form. But we need to put the exam information within the form. We just said we need to create a temporary state. So what we need to do here if we have this temporary state storing the exam. We have to save uh, the exam in this state, yes. So we can write props, uh, and then we need to create all the state, etc. And we can call it set uh, editable exam. And we need to pass exam. And now we need to pass all this information down because exam action, exam action already has an exam, so nice, we already have it here. We need to pass set show form and this set editable form. So exam action is called by exam rules. So here we can have a set show form. props.setShowForm and we need to do the same for the editable exam. Editable exam uh, props.setEditableExam 
We need to pass them down. Then exam row needs to pass set show form that is defined here in exam table. That is the show form. That is set show form. And we need to pass set editable exam that is again set editable exam oh, let me stop this because okay so we pass through from exam table to exam row to exam action the possibility to show the form and now and also this possibility to edit this state, to set this state, and now we need to create the state in exam table because it's the common answer store, as we said. Editable exam. And set editable exam. Use state. How can we initialize editable exam? Should we initialize editable exam? Yes, no, maybe. We don't have exam here yet. We are in exam table. With a void exam, uh, empty. Yeah, or yes, we can put it an empty object in it. It's an empty exam. Uh, or we can just put nothing. <coughs> when we put nothing, the, ex the state is undefined. So that we, when the exam table is built for the first time, Editable exam is undefined. And we know that it's undefined. So we can, otherwise, it will have something in it, an exam in it, an object with name, code, etc. Okay. This is what happens when we press the button. So if we press the button, we can have a look at it, probably. When we press the button, the form appear, and if we go here in the components, we should have in the state information system, the code, the score, etc because we click on the first link. And if we click on the second one, if we refresh in this moment and click on the second one, we have instead data science and database technology. And if we click on the third one, we have software engineering. So these things work. We put it in the state, the right exam that we want to edit. And this works for every button we click. Now we need to bring this information into the form. Because right now it's empty. So how can we bring this information? We have the exam in the state. So what we need to do? for sure, is to pass it as a props in the exam form. And we can have, for instance, a property that's called exam that contains the editable exam. And in the, in the form, we can call the properties for exam because we don't have other exams. We just have the one that is edited and the one that we are creating in the other case, but we don't pass other exam. 
but this is just a name. If you prefer, you can call it editable exam again. Hmm? Uh, let me stop this here. Now, we pass the editable exam to the form, and we want to pre-fill the information in the form when we have the editable exam, when we are in the edit case and not in the add case. Right? Because in the add case, we don't have an exam to show. We have nothing. In the other case, we have instead um, the exam, the full exam per se. Hmm? So if we add initialize the exam as your colleague was suggesting with an empty exam, we can do things slightly different than when we done now. Hmm? Uh, having chosen uh, probably one check less with the solution uh, than we are going to do. Uh, having defined it as undefined, we will ask you to do one more check, probably. Hmm? But in, in, many, in some cases you don't know, hmm? maybe you want to reuse the, the, the the, the, the form for multiple things, so that is another way to, to do that. How we can initialize the form? We have the information in editable exam that here is a props called exam. How can we put the code of the exam in the first, in the first input field, the name in the second, etc.? So we have props.exam. Let's assume for a moment that is not undefined. So you say in the return here. Or maybe we, we can just bring it. Exactly. We need to do, if we want to pre-fill a form, given that the form is controlled and all the elements in the form are matched, with a state, and if the state change, also the input field change, and vice versa, they are double binded, one another, the field on the screen, and the state within the form, we, if we put in the form, in the state of each item, the things that we need to display, they will be displayed. Mm -hmm. So if we need to pre-fill the form with something, we need to initialize the local state of that form in the same way. So here, if we imagine for a moment that we just have the edit exam always available, we will have props.exam.code for initializing the first one, props.exam.name for initializing the second, score and date for initializing the third. Now, given that we are reusing the form in two moments, add and edit, we need to keep this working, this initialization working both for add and for edit. Hmm? So we need to, to do as uh, your colleague was suggesting. If this is not undefined, then here go props.exam.code. Otherwise, it will go the empty string. It was the general behavior that we had before. So in the case of add, props.exams is undefined, so we will put it an empty string. In the case of an existing editable exams, props.exam will be an object, so not undefined, and we can pick the code. It's not dangerous, it's, it's not recommended to initialize a local state from a props in general, that is true. Uh, but here we need to pre-fill a form, and given that the local state is binded with the form inputs, we, we, we really don't have any other way in this moment to initialize. So for the form, this is, in general, it's not recommended. For the form, this is 
let's say, the way to go. We need to pass this information to the form. And if the form is controlled, it means that it needs to receive information through props. So we need to go in this way. Um, it will be the same, I mean, um, with the difference is that that will be, that there is a difference, two differences. One is that that could be a side effect, but let's focus on the side effects in another moment. The, the other thing is that this will be called when the form is created. The other one will be called every time the form is rendered. So potentially it will be called more time. Okay, and then we, we need to do the same things for the other state. So for course, we have name. For score, we have score and 30. And for date, we have date. That should be already a DJS object. And this is the only change we need to do in the form for showing pre-filled information. Pass which information we want to, to show and show it by initializing the state, the, the states, the local state of the component. So let's see if it's true. So if I click on information system security, we have information system security. If I click on add, we have information system security. Hmm. And if I click on data science, we have data science. But if I click on add, we have data science. We need to fix this, right? And why, why did this happen? Why when I press add, so let's say it's software engineering, let's press cancel, that will destroy the form and let's press add again, and we see software engineering. Why this happens? Because the state is in the exam table, and the exam table doesn't change. So what we need to do is that when we press cancel, or save, or when we press add, actually, we need to empty that state so that the, the form will render correctly in this moment. Uh, so for instance, uh, where can we go when we do this? Um, let's try to do it in the add. So here, set show form true in the button. And here we can say also set editable exam to nothing, undefined as before. So here we have the empty add. If we open it, it's still Data science, if we press add, is empty. That could be done on the add button, it could be done on the cancel button, it could be done on the save button. If we do it in the save button or in the cancel button, we do it twice. One for the save and one for the cancel. Actually in the save, we can do it on the unsubmit, but. Okay, let's complete this. So we edited an exam, 
we change something here, we press save, and we want not to have this. Now when we press save from that form, we call the end of submit that will do the add, not the editing. So we need to change also the end of submit to distinguish between the two cases. It's an edit or it's an add. Hmm? So we can say that if props.exam is undefined, then it's an add. Otherwise, it's an edit. The same criteria we had for deciding which element to display in the form we use here as well. Hmm? To distinguish between it's an add or it's an edit. Now, this props.edit exam doesn't exist. So we need to go back up to the app.js for, for editing the exam in the state. So in app.js, we will create, like we did for add and delete, a const edit exam. Let's call it update exam. That we call set exams, etc., like we, we we have seen in the slides with the map, etc. And then we need to pass this update exam up until the form. So with props. So uh, edit exam, it's equal to update exam. In the exam table. Then the exam table receives this as a props and needs to pass it to the exam form. Together with the add, we can pass it edit exam And similarly to what we did for the add, we can say that this function, this callback, calls bro bo both the edit exam and the set show form false. So that when we submit, we also close the form, like we did for the add, and we have the same behavior. Hmm? And in the exam form, we already have props dot, we call already props dot edit exam. So that should be, that should be done. Okay, now we need to actually write the code for updating the exam. So if you remember from the slides that we have seen an hour ago, more or less, we have to use the set exam with a map. So we need to do like we did for the add, set exams, all the exams. But here, 
we need to do more things. We need to do all the exams dot map. And for each of them, for each exam, we need to check whether the exam that we are editing is the same that we have in the state. And if the exam that we are editing is the same that we have in the state, we need to edit it. Otherwise, we have to return the exam. So update exam as a parameter. That is the exam that we want to edit, to change. And so here we can say if exam.code is equal to x.code, that is the exam that we have within the current state, then return exam. We add in the array in the new array generated by map, the updated exam. Better. We should create a new object from exam. Exam code equal code is exam.code, name is exam.name. Score is exam.score and date is exam.date. So that we are 100% sure that this is a new object because we created from scratch. Otherwise, we just return the object that we have. in the original state because it's not anything that we want to change. And then we need to return the list, in this case the array generated by all the exam, by the map. So we can write return all the exam dot map or below return a new object, assigning the map to a list, to a new list and return that list. And we can save. So let's try this. We started from a clean state. If I click add is empty, I can add an exam as before. I can edit any of these exam in theory. So let's edit software engineering. We have software engineering. We deserve a better score for software engineering and we can save. And you see the software engineering is now 30 with the updated score. And again, if we press add, it's empty. If we try to edit again software engineering, we have 30. That is the new score. If we edit test, we have the text exam etc. Okay. We have still two things and the off to to say about this. Uh, first of all, notice what happens here. I click on edit on information system and the form with information system appear. Now I click on edit on data science and we, I didn't yet, but we know that when I click on data science, on edit, the new state, the editable exam, get the state correctly because we have seen that before. But look at what happens in the form. Nothing. Same things for software engineering. 
or for test. The content on the form doesn't change. Why? That is the solution. Why that? This is one of the solution, probably not the, the cleanest one, because in that case, uh, it works. But in the case, every time we click on edit, we need to, first of all, set undefined, and then set the, the current value every time. But why it happens? So the, the edit is no, it's not even solving that. Uh, because this, the edit, if you, if you look on this, again, in the exam table, the selected exam, the editable exam is data science, is not information system. So that state is changed correctly already. If, if I press on software engineering, here I see software engineering. So that state is changed correctly. Why this form doesn't change the content? Because it's not created from scratch. Because these things here only are executed when the f a component is created. And in this case, when we go to edit and we show the form, the form is pre-filled. And then, when we press another edit, the form is pre-filled. These four lines aren't called anymore. Because at most is re-rendered, at most. But when I press the button, so keep in mind this. And this also will happen for the add, happened before for the add, before enabling the button add and cancel. Then when we have an add, you open the, the form with add, we write something, we press save, and then we, when we click on add, we have the same exam in it. Because we didn't delete, destroy and recreate the form. So this happens for that reason. And there is a clean way in React to solve this. So it's not a matter of state. It's just a matter of what is rendered here. We need to tell React that every time we press one of these buttons, we need to reset the form, basically. So that the old state will be recreated. Since, again, the local state are matched with the input fields. Uh, that is one way to go. The other way to go, how we can prevent this problem? Without writing, well, writing code, but without changing state, without changing the form. If I click here, information system, the form, for editing information system appear. The problem starts when I click on edit on another row. How can I hide the problem? But this will toggle the form. So right now it will close the form. And then I had to click again to reopen it. Make the buttons disabled. That is another way. If I am in editing mode for information system, I, can, I should disable all the other buttons. <coughs> because I, I should. That's an option. That's a design option. I am deciding that when the person is using my application and it's editing an exam, that is the only task that the person, the person is doing. 
editing that specific exam. If the person wants to edit another exam, they need to press cancel, and so the button will be enabled again, preventing errors. In this case, preventing showing a behavior that is strange. I cannot edit another exam until I am editing this one. I need to cancel this, and then I can edit another exam. Or save this, and then I can edit another exam. So one thing is to disable the other buttons so that they are not clickable. I have four buttons. One is the enable one, the one that shows the form. All the others are disabled. That is one possibility, disabling the not working buttons. The other possibility to actually have these buttons working as we and keeping them enabled is to use a key. Do you remember key? The one that we use for the list, for the tables. We have a key here in the exam row. Each exam row has a key. And I told you that React uses key to understand whether a row in a list is changed or not. But this same behavior uh, can work also for other components. So you can use key for every component that you want. And React look at those key. And when the key is changed, the component is resetted. The state of the component are resetted. So if we add a key to the exam form, And this key is editable exam editable exam dot code or let's say zero. So it's if it's undefined, it ed the case is zero. If it's not undefined, let's pick the code of the exam. That is a key unique for the exams. Notice what happens. If I press add, I see as before. If I press edit, I see information system security. If I press the other edit, I see the information from that edit, etc. All of these by adding key to the exam form. So when you want to reset a component, reset the states of a component, you can either destroy and recreate the component like the add button did, or you can set up a different key. Now, we can set up a different key here easily because we have three exams that already have three different keys and an identifier that is different from one to the other. And we have just one add using that um, form, that component, that doesn't have an exam code, but it could be always zero. Because once we have in add, we don't need to change the content of add. Because we either save or cancel or we can cancel directly the things that we write here hmm? if you want to create another exam. So we can have zero or whatever as a key for adding. And then we need to change the key for the others. Hmm? So key in this way is not used in a list or in a table, hmm? but it's used on something that still needs to change according to, in this case, a table. Because when we click on edit here, I'm referring to a specific row in the table, to a specific item in a collection. And so this 
allow us to edit the form. So this form is like destroyed and recreated from a perspective, but you don't see anything on screen. So again, if you want to reset the state of a component, of any component, either you pass a different key, when the form, when the components receive a new key, it will be rendered, resetted from zero. So those four lines here, those four lines here will be called with a new key, or you can destroy and recreate the component right now. Okay? Okay, this closed the editing. You see, the editing uh, has a little bit of moving parts, especially if you want to reuse the components, like we did in this case, not to repeat code. Um, one more thing on form that I forgot before. Now, let's go back for a moment with the mind in the add case. Actually, it's the same, but just for simplicity. I, I told you that the form is submitted with on submit. That is correct. Uh, another option that works, more or less, is not using on submit on the form, but using on click on the button. So if we try this, and then I will show you where it differs, because it differs on one thing. If we try this, we should be able to add an exam, like we did before. So from this perspective, from a functional perspective, nothing changed. A form needs to be submitted. So it's more proper for a form to use the on submit than the on click. But even the on click works. Because the end of submit basically reads the state of a component, so that doesn't do anything strange. What we lose with the on click? all the validations. We still have the validation on the input field. Minimum, maximum, but with on click, we totally missed all the validation, all the HTML validation that were instead implicitly check with the on submit. So a form should be submitted with unsubmit. That enables also all these checks automatically. But given that it's a button, it's a component, you can also submit with the on click, but that is less, uh, let's say, coherent from a say, theoretical perspective because it's a form, a form needs to be submitted. But you can also do this but you miss all the validation, and you have to do all the validation by hand in the end of submit code. So this is to show you that this is a possibility. Clearly, it's better to use on submit on forms, because that is the method, the event that the form emit, the submission on submit. But even with on click, it works, but more or less works. Validation stop working. Mm -hmm. So let me restore this as it was before with the on submit. Mm -hmm. So we can check that all the validations still work. Mm -hmm. So apparently the behavior is the same, but clearly under the root there are differences between the two things. Okay?
now. To conclude in these last 10 minutes, let me say two things about the context. It's quite easy, not very complex. And we are not going to use it right now or in the near future, let's say, the near, near future. So what is the context? The context is a way to avoid passing props from a component to its child, to its child, to its child, etc. It will allow you to teleport props wherever you want in the application. So you can have a context as up level and all the other components can use that context, those information. It's a sort of global variable that the entire application can use. without declaring them. You declare this sort of global variable that is the context at up level, up JS level, and then you can use it in the rest of the application when you need it. So this is typically used for three use cases. Uh, here there are four things, but I, you will understand why I said three. The first one is for the visual theme or for visual aspect. You want to have the entire application in dark mode and in light mode. And this is something that applies to the entire application. So you have a button to say dark mode, night mode, day mode, dark mode, light mode, whatever, and you click it and the entire application needs to be rendered accordingly to that change, to the visual appearance. So with props, uh, you will need to have a button somewhere and then a state somewhere and then put these props to all the components in the application. And if you have 20 components, you have to pass these props to all the 20 components. With context, you can define it in the context and have all the props read that context without passing it to the props. That is one of the use cases for which context is used. Changing the visual appearance of the entire application of a grad or a great part of the application. The second thing that is used is multi-language support. Again, something that applies to the entire application. You want to change the entire text of an application from English to Italian or to Italian from English. And this applies to the entire application again. So it's useful to have a global variable that you can read from everywhere to change the behavior. And the third case is when you need to share data among many components. And an example of sharing data is the logged in, logged out status. So when you are logged in, your components, many of your components will behave in a, same, in a certain way. You will have more options. You will have access to different components than in a not logged in stage. So in this case, you share data, the username, for instance, among various component. And if you have the username, you can show the logged in components. If you don't have the username, you can show the public version of the web application. So these are the three main things, language for which context is used. Languages visual appearance or sharing data like login and logout information, and status. Uh, the context is created with three and used with three things. The first thing is you need to create the context and React has a method that's called create context. And store it in a variable that you can call it example context, your context, whatever you prefer. Then after creating the context, you have to provide that context to the component. And you have a component that is called, as your context you created, dot .provide, dot .provider, and then you have the value. The value is the current value to be passed to all the components in the application that will need it. So in the case of the language, 
the value could be Italian or English. And according to the value in this, com in this provider, all the, application, all the rest of the application will know how to render itself. This is to provide the context you created. And then the application, the other components, needs to consume this context. And they could do it in two ways. One, using a component that's called the consumer. So your name of the context dot consumer. And inside that, you have a function that takes the value and can use it. Or with the use context that is similar to use state as a concept. Use context, and you give the context that you created. So you create a context at the beginning. You provide the context, let's say, in app.js. And then all the other elements that want to access to that context just need to be consumer of the context. And you don't need to pass it to any component. It's immediately available as soon as you have a provider. So let's have a look at this example. Uh, let's create hmm, a simple application, multi-language, a text and a button. And when you press translate to Italian, you have the second one. And when you press translate in English, you get the first one. Mm -hmm. Simple application, two components, the paragraph and the button. But entirely translated in English or in Italian. So this is the application. Mm -hmm. Up to now, nothing strange. You have the current language in a state. You have the, the function for entering the button that just changed the state from Italian to English, or vice versa. And then you have your application with the welcome text and the button that is this button that receive toggle language as a props. Hmm? Simple application, one state changing value, Italian, English, changing strings, actually. So if we want to add the context, what we need to do? We need to create the context. And typically, this is done in a separate file that has basically one line, language context equal, or whatever you want to call it, the context, equal create context. And then you need to export that. And then in app.js, in addition to everything else that you have, you just need to import the language context. Then, if you want to say that the language is provided to everybody else, in app.js, you can add a language context provider. You can have multiple contexts in application, multiple sort of global variable. Here, you have just we are using one for languages. But we can also have the privacy context, or the visual language context, or the logged in context. You can have multiple contexts. And so you see, here we have these components that wrap up the entire application. So both the welcome and the button. And provide a value. And this value is the language state. So the context is initialized as a provider here with the current language of the application. Here is initialized with nothing. Here it's the, the, the value that you want to pass to all, eventually, possibly, to all the components within this provider. And this is what we need to do for passing this information. Now, if you want to consume this information, you don't have a props, but you, you have to use a consumer. So this is the example with the consumer as a component, in which you have, in the button, you have a consumer that has a function that takes the language that is the value you passed, and you render the button with the right text according to the language. 
and the same thing for the text mm? and this translation dot language this translation is just a javascript array with uh, welcome italian the text welcome english the test in english button english the test in english of the button etc just an array of strings but you see that here we defined one context provider and the components can choose whether they need or not and if they need it they can call it as a consumer register it as a consumer of that context and using it in their own body in, the, in their own functions so in this case both of these elements get the language maybe you have a copyright uh, line in the end of the page that doesn't need to be translated because it will be the same in any language so not in any in both of this in both in both in both languages will be the same so that component will not have to be translated for instance or a component made of images you don't need to translate images and this is the example with language con the context consumer uh, you also have a hook for doing the same thing as the consumer and notice that there is no hook for creating or providing a context just for consuming so for creating a context you have to use create context for providing a context you have to use context created dot provider value but for consuming you can choose either the hook or the uh, component based element based version and the hook is you see way easier it's just one line const a variable equal use context your context and this variable language will contain either italian or english in this case and same things here for the welcome just one line and the rest of the application will be the same as before so just one line and again if you have multiple contexts you just can use multiple time use context by attaching the use context to the right context you created so you have the current user context in this example and the notification context so you can use both of them and do whatever you need from this context without nesting components etc so what happens when we need to change context value from a consumer child when a child that consume a context when a consumer needs to update the value of the context the provider must also provide together with the value a function to do that so it will write provider value equal value that you want to pass comma the uh, function that you want to to pass it in curly brackets like an object and then the props the the consumers can access to this object and take the first um, value for actually reading the context and the second one for updating the context but this is something that you have to do manually there is not something like a use state that immediately create the state and the function for setting the state for context you have the value and you can do whatever you want into the value so in the example here we can have written nope value language comma set language that is the handler for changing the state so if a components need to update something so like putting this toggle language here in this parenthesis that could be also possible if multiple components need to access to the same function in this case just the button needed to toggle language because the other is was a text so it was passed as a props so context is one more things that you can use when you need to pass information globally uh, with some warning first of all now that you know context 
don't put everything into it because it defeats the portability of components and also create problem with the functional component in terms of purity. It's like a global variable. Uh, don't use it for laziness. Oh, I need to pass these props in 11 moment. Let's put it in a context. No, if it needs to be passed down as a props, you need to pass down as a props. If it's just a chain of a single components that need to be done. A context should be used for something more global within the entire application or with a great part of the application. Like again, languages, visual appearance, user information, so something that have impact on the great part of an application, not just one portion of it. And this was context in 10 minutes. Uh, we are not going to use context for a while, actually, um, because the next big lab will be used for, um, for working with the form again, and state, add, uh, etc. Next week, you will see with Luca, not with me, um, the router, mm, the React router. So how to have a web application using multiple pages, a single page application using multiple pages, so changing the URL. So we, you will have the exam list in the home page and then slash add for the add form, slash edit for the edit form, all in separate pages, but still within one single React application. And then in the lab, you will apply the edit form like we did today and the routing uh, in your big lab, in the last part, I think, of your big lab one. And then we will probably use context when we are going to do the authorization and authentication so that we have user information to pass through the entire application. Okay? Uh, if you have a question, as always, write on Slack. I will not be here next week. I will not be here in Italy next week. So if you have to write to me, just be patient with uh, time of response. I will be in the United States, so time zone doesn't help. Have a nice week. <laughs>